Hello, welcome. Thank you for listening in today. I'm here today to talk to you about how literary festivals in Canada create community within speculative fiction publishing. I've been a part of this community myself for many years now, working in the publishing industry and attending these festivals. So I'll be speaking from personal experience as well as from research from recent publications regarding community and literary festivals. Here's a brief look at what I'll cover today. I'll start by defining a couple of key terms important to contextualize the rest of the paper. Then I'll discuss how literary festivals encourage community building within the publishing industry. Next, I'll discuss how and why literary festivals and related community events are so important to indie presses in Canada. I'll finish by discussing the accessibility and limitations of the in-person literary festival format. So what is speculative fiction? This term means different things to different people usually depending on if they are a reader of science fiction or of science fiction and its related genres of fantasy and horror. To the former group, speculative fiction is a subgenre of science fiction relating to texts that deal with questions of nature, reality, and the universe. To the latter group, speculative fiction is an umbrella term to cover all speculative type genres, including science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Basically any type of fiction that might not be set on our world as we know it. I use the second definition of speculative fiction, covering the wide range of speculative genres. Millicent Weber, in her 2018 book, Literary Festivals and Contemporary Book Culture, describes literary festivals as being a celebration of literary culture that integrate aspects of literary culture into their organization and events. There are many types of festival or conference that focus on literary topics, including writer conferences and book fairs but the literary festival specifically celebrates all aspects of literary cultures instead of focusing on one entity. A literary festival celebrates writers, readers, agents, publishers, and booksellers all in one place without prioritizing any one group over another. Literary festivals, as Beth Driscoll says, conform to the broader pattern of cultural festivals in the promise of community they offer. Here are some examples of literary festivals from across Canada. I've chosen examples that specifically encourage indie publishers and new authors to attend and participate in their festivals, and ones that tend to draw attention from the speculative fiction community. We see examples here from British Columbia, Alberta, Manitoba, and Ontario. Although some Canadian festivals similar to these also encourage programming and streams for other media, such as video games and film, there's also a strong literary stream that warrants the literary festival classification. Many of these festivals pictured here are specifically focused on those literary topics, especially looking at When Words Collide and Creative Ink Festival, which advertises being festivals for readers and writers. Literary related programming offered at these festivals include blue pencil editing sessions, pitch sessions with agents and publishers, writing workshops, and panels with editors, publishers, and authors on topics related to genre, writing craft, or getting published. People will first attend these festivals because of the programming they offer, but they will continually return and find more festivals to attend because of the sense of community developed with other attendees and participants. What exactly does community mean in terms of literary festivals? And how does it promote indie publishing and speculative fiction publishing specifically? A pair of articles published in the Journal of Community Psychology in 2002 titled Sense of Community in Science Fiction Fandom discuss how strong the sense of community is within science fiction fandoms and how that community is created through attendance at various festivals and conferences related to science fiction, which includes the large science fiction conventions but also a great number of literary festivals. Using analysis from the concept of the psychological sense of community, their findings show that modern society appears to develop community around interest rather than locality, and that the members of science fiction fandoms that attend such festivals regularly feel a strong sense of community with those they meet and engage with at these festivals. So what does this fandom that they mention really look like in terms of publishing and book culture? The participants in literary festivals and in the fandom previously mentioned appear on the top half of Ray Murray and Squire's digital publishing communication circuit. I'll note that retailers often participate in these festivals as well by setting up a booth in the vendor room to sell books and related ephemera, 
but the groups who actively participate in the programming and community building aspects of these festivals are largely made up of readers, authors, agents, editors, and publishers. This shows that the majority of the value chain of modern publishing attends these festivals, which vary in size from a couple hundred participants to thousands. These festivals and related genre fan conventions are a rare occurrence, having this many players in the industry all in one place, mingling, teaching, and learning with each other. As Weber says, booksellers, publishers, authors, and educators are all invested in this dialogue and all of these powerful groups have a stake in the literary festival. Community at literary festivals is created through two major attractions at festivals, participation in and attendance of festival programming and the celebrity of guests. Here's an example of festival programming for the first day of the 2019 Creative Inc. Festival held in Burnaby, British Columbia. In the first three columns, we see a variety of panel and workshop programming applicable mostly to writers on themes of bettering your writing and the business of being a writer. These panels would have a combination of authors, editors, publishers, and agents presenting and answering audience questions. For readers and fans who may not be writers themselves, there are the Friday night readings and, on other days of the festival, a dedicated time for author signings. Any of this programming creates community through participation and socialization, but what's important here, especially in connecting to the theme of this conference, is the rightmost column, showing pitch sessions and blue pencils. Pitch sessions are typically run by publishers or agents that are actively seeking new authors to work with. In this case, the publisher accepting pitches is J.M. Landell's from Pulp Literature, which publishes a quarterly literary magazine and some novel novels and novellas. These pitch sessions are also valuable for publishers as they give them a chance to meet new authors and find new voices to publish. Blue pencils and red, red pencils are editing sessions in which authors will bring their work to an editor for critique. The difference between the two being that in blue pencils, the editors look at short pieces on the spot, and in red pencils, the editors look at longer works ahead of time and come prepared with notes. Both of these session types, pitches and editing sessions, allow new and learning authors to connect with industry professionals to help them build their craft one-on-one -on -one and offer a chance of publication in a casual, friendly setting. The second major attraction of literary festivals is the special guests. Usually a literary or genre celebrity, whether that be an author, editor, publisher, or artist, that has gained celebrity status through the work they have published and the fan community they have created through their work. The draws for celebrity guests include some programming events, particularly the pitch sessions, book readings, and author signings, as ways that new authors and fans can meet and learn from these special guests. Beth Driscoll, in her 2015 article, Sentiment Analysis and the Literary Festival Audience, says, because the literary festivals feature live author events, their model of community is bound up in literary celebrity. And most often, strong positive emotion is linked to festival guests indicating that a, that a sense of connection with presenters is fundamental to the emotional satisfactions of the literary festival experience. The majority of attendees of these literary festivals tend to be local authors who have published a few books or have seen mild success with their writing, and newer authors who want to learn from those further ahead in their writing careers than them. What then is the draw for these celebrity authors and publishing professionals to attend these festivals? For many, the answer is simply that they got their start learning at these festivals as well, and want to pay it forward to the community. Authors such as Robert J. Sawyer and Guy Gabriel Kay have said, well in attendance of a literary festival, that they enjoy participating in the community and meeting readers. These authors are also usually named as a guest of honor at these festivals, which typically requires them to give a keynote speech. This advertises to the general public that these authors will be at the festival to promote general attendance as there is a chance to meet that author and have books signed by them in person. In the case of many speculative fiction focused festivals throughout Canada, including those pictured earlier, including When Words Collide, Ad Astra, and Vicon, the Aurora Awards also draw a crowd of accomplished and celebrity authors and publishers. The Aurora Awards is the biggest award for speculative fiction publishing in Canada and the awards ceremony is held at one of the many literary festivals across Canada, rotating its location every year. 
The award ceremony will bring in nominees and winners from across Canada to a festival not necessarily in their locale, which gives attendees a unique opportunity to meet these authors, learn from them, and have their books signed. If these authors are attending the festival for the award ceremony, during which they may be honored with an award, they will often participate in the festival programming as well, including panels, readings, signings, and editing sessions. So the two key pieces of a festival that help to create community, the programming and the celebrity guests, are intrinsically linked as the latter helps to improve and fill the former with quality learning opportunities for attendees. Those who come to the festival to meet a guest of honor will end up finding a community surrounding not only that guest, but the festival as a whole. Much of what I've talked about so far in terms of creating community through literary festivals can be said about most festivals or community events in general. So how does the achievement of a psychological sense of community through literary festivals affect indie speculative fiction publishers in Canada specifically? Most publishers working with speculative fiction genres in Canada are indie and small publishers. An independent publisher is defined primarily as being independent from a multinational conglomerate publisher. So if the publisher is not owned or funded by any of the big five publishers, it's probably an indie press. Due to ever increasing literary competition for media attention and shelf space in bookstores and libraries, many of these smaller independent publishers rely on direct to reader sales in the vendor room and in panels at literary festivals and related community events across Canada. As previously mentioned, these publishers will speak on panels and participate in pitch and editing sessions, but they will often also have a table set up in the vendor room where they can sell their books and talk to prospective readers and authors as well. Many of these publishers rely on these direct-to-reader sales and the marketing opportunity of attending literary festivals because it is extremely difficult for them to get meaningful shelf space in bookstores due to demands of quantity and contracts that allow returns if the bookstore doesn't sell through. Being able to connect with their audience and sell directly to a reader gives them a greater chance for sale and more opportunity to reach their desired readership. Unfortunately, most of these indie presses cannot afford to travel across the country to attend every literary festival that their prospective readers attend. One author, Pat Flewelling, who published with Taiki Books, one of the small presses on the previous slide, was frustrated by the lack of cross-country sales opportunities, so she started Myth Hawker Traveling Bookstore to represent indie authors and publishers at conventions and festivals across the country, taking small press books where their publishers couldn't afford to. The demand for this type of business was high, so Mythhawker saw great success in their first couple of years. It's unknown if they'll return to festivals after the pandemic though, as is the case with many small businesses this year. The benefit for publishers to operate this way through literary festivals is that they have direct contact with their audience, and therefore they have a solid understanding of what their audience is looking for. They also have direct contact with new authors that they might end up publishing in the future. The benefit for attendees of the Literary Festival is that these publishers, along with those celebrity guests of honour, contribute expertise, knowledge, and training at festivals. These indie publishers help to facilitate the speculative fiction community among fans, readers, authors, and other publishing professionals by attending literary festivals, but they also have curated a community among other indie publishers as well. Since these small publishers all typically attend the same literary festivals near where they are located, these publishers get to know each other as colleagues and friends. In an interview about the pending sale of Simon & Schuster to the Bertelsmann Group, Hazel Miller, publisher of Book Hug Press, says, At the end of the day, we're still competing with one another, but it's always a more friendly and collegial atmosphere than competing against the large multinational houses. That collegiality is seen at literary festivals, where publishers will cover for each other when they need to leave their booth in the vendor room, and even recommend each other's titles when they don't have something for a customer who requested a specific type of book. These are first-hand experiences from the many literary festivals I've attended across Canada, supported by anecdotal evidence from publishers for events that I wasn't able to attend. Even though they are technically in direct competition with each other, the speculative fiction publishing community is so strong that publishers more often consider each other friends rather than competitors. 
The speculative fiction community created through literary festivals is inherently a happy atmosphere and a positive space to be in. However, it is important to note that these spaces are often in inaccessible to many audiences. Literary festivals can be extremely expensive, especially for those who write as a hobby or are struggling to make a living through their craft, and for those who come from a working class background. Some festivals, including Creative Inc. and FOLD, the Festival of Literary Diversity, have programs in place for attendees to donate an extra pass to those who cannot afford to attend, which helps to increase the financial accessibility of their festivals. But not all festivals offer this option. Over the last year, we've seen many festivals and conferences adjust to restrictions to in-person events and shift to online formats, like this conference, which allows greater accessibility for some, but less accessibility for others, depending on individual needs. What I hope to see going forward, once in-person events are allowed again, is a hybrid model that allows for meaningful participation, both in-person and online, to allow for greater accessibility for all. I'll end with this quote from Weber's book on literary festivals, in which she quotes Michael Werner's use of the term public. In literary theory, the circulation of a text and the resulting dialogue about that text are generally understood to be constitutive of a public of those to whom the text is meaningful or interesting. In this quote, Weber is talking about the books and texts discussed at a literary festival, but the same meaning applies to the discussion of literary festivals and the community they create within as text as well. There's been a lot of research work done on literary festivals in the last couple of decades, but there is a lot of work left to be done in terms of how specific communities are created and keep in touch through these once a year literary festivals around the world. This paper is the start of that work for the specific community within indie speculative fiction publishing in Canada. The speculative fiction publishing community is curated, created, and enhanced by literary festivals through the indie publishers that work hard to publish and teach Canadian authors and future publishing professionals. Overall, the takeaway is that speculative fiction Canada is more than just a genre, it's a community. Thank you.